So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, some of you are still popping in, which is great. Um, welcome to the second workshop in Beyond Barnard's uh, professional development series, it's new this semester. Um, and we are talking about managing workplace relationships. And so working with supervisors, working with colleagues, um, other folks <laughs> that may be at your job, you know, how that how that works, some tips, some ideas for managing those to your benefit. Um, so I am Lindsay Granger Weaver, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Senior Associate Director of Internship Programs and the Equity Lead at Beyond Barnard. Um, if you all want to just introduce yourselves in the chat, maybe say your name, your class year, and either where you're working um, on or off campus, that'd be great just to get a sense of who's with us today. Being on campus, welcome. Small nonprofit upstate, okay. Campus, Athena Center, Preceptor. Nice. Class of 25, working at BCIT. I appreciate your office so much. Hi, Mats. Love IMAPs. Great. So we've got a good mix of folks here. Um, a great on campus representation. Working at a bank next summer. Cool. Me definitely managing <laughs> relationships in bank. All right, we'll keep on at populating that um, and start to have these conversations as we get started. So in today's workshop, you just the agenda, you know, go over a little bit about why we're talking about managing relationships, um, some keys to positive workplace relationships, how to handle difficult situations, because those will come up. Um, not everything is happy care bears all the time. Um, so we talk about some strategies to manage, some things to look out for. Um, also, how to sustain some positive relationships. Um, and then wrap up and then it'll be time for any questions that you may have. We'll also pause in the middle just to kind of get some questions as they come. So you can either put them in the chat or just hold off until these pause points. It's totally up to you. So why are we talking about this? <laughs> um, basically in talking to students and talking to supervisors who, you know, students who work on and off campus, supervisors both on and off campus, oh, across the board recognize that this is an area for growth. Um, this is something that you kind of always have to be mindful of no matter what, no matter where you are in your career. Um, so, you know, I'm many years into mine still working on managing workplace relationships and because you tend to always work with other people. Um, and dealing with people in professional settings can be tricky. Um, no matter what the level, it's still, it's something that, you know, changes with different situations, changes with different personnel because people change, people are different. And so you have to figure out what works for you so that you know what can work best um, moving forward. And then in your particular situation, just the power dynamics of being a student who works on campus or an intern in an office of maybe not a lot of other interns or that hierarchy um, can make managing these relationships even trickier because often you feel like you may not have any power in the relationship or in the, in the workplace to, to do the things that you know will be um, useful for you. Um, and then also just this, like a lot of other things, is a skill that needs to be practiced and honed, um, which is why it is part of this professional development series so that we can talk about it. Um, you can start to get some tips on how to make workplace relationships work for you. Um, and that's something, again, that you will probably, if this isn't your first position, then you, you understand the importance. And if not, if it is your first position, then welcome to doing this early. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you will be ahead of the game on this skill. Um, so that goes kind of into this slide, um, the importance of workplace relationships right now. 
Um, in general, work is easier when you get along with your colleagues. <laughs> you don't have to like them, um, but you do have to get along. It just makes things a lot simpler. If I think back on jobs that I've really liked, like my, my favorite job ever was scooping ice cream over a summer. And it wasn't because I love to scoop ice cream and go home and like sticky and gross. It's because my coworkers were awesome. <laughs> um, there are places, other places where on paper, it was an amazing experience, but you think back, it was miserable because the people made it miserable. And so if you can manage the relationships, if you can get along with your colleagues, it just makes the work just easier to do, easier to bear. Um, and yeah, environment is often really important. At this point in your career though too, you also wanna start cultivating mentors and professional connections because you truly never know A, who knows whom, but also where you'll end up in the future. And so if you start to look at the folks that you work with now, if it's supervisors, if it maybe who's supervising them as potential mentors and folks who you can not only learn from in the context of your role, but also just as a career and as like a professional role model in a sense, um, that made, it's really great to to think about that and think about ways that, you know, maybe right now, it's not someone that you need to hook you up with something later, but certainly um, if you oh, have that relationship. What is going on? Oh, what? Oh, can you unmute? All right. <laughs> um, then that is someone that you can um, start now and then hopefully after, later on uh, could come in handy. Again, learning to practice these strategies, it's a skill. Um, starting and maintaining professional relationships often doesn't come naturally to folks. And so thinking about it in that context, um, you can start to look at these positions as just like practice. Um, they're very, a lot lower stakes perhaps than some of the ones that you'll have uh, later on in college or especially after you're out of college. And so just like getting a sense of like the practice of this and starting to, to do things. Um, is useful. And then specific considerations, um, we'll go over some for on-campus employees, which I see from the chat that there are quite a few of you. <laughs> um, it is really complex to have, to work on campus and work with people who you know in other contexts, whether they are your colleagues or your supervisors, um, to be in an, to work in an office that you also need to access as a student makes things a little tricky. Um, and then the fact that a lot of staff here are alums of either Barnard or Columbia or parents of former or students or former students. And so just like the different ties to the institution present both challenges and opportunities, right? It makes it a lot easier to find that, cultivate the mentors and cultivate professional connections because the Barnard network is one that is very strong and very helpful to folks who seek it out. Um, but also it could be a challenge if you're having an issue with that person that you may have to have multiple touch points with them um, outside of work. And so these are just some of the reasons why we're talking about this and we're talking about it in the relation to your job now, even if it's a job that you don't see carrying you forward into the future. All right, so some keys to positive workplace relationships. And this really boils down to four things that are I guess inherently useful to all relationships, <laughs> um, but this is kind of in the workplace context. So uh, trust, respect, self-awareness, and open communication. Um, if you trust that your coworkers are going to are there with your best interests, if you trust that your supervisor is not trying to set you up or screw you over in some kind of way, um, it's just way easier to do your work if you don't have to watch your back. This is really like a core to, um, to positive workplace relationships is trust. And I guess the baseline for all relationships in general is respect. And so even if like at work, it's very easy to work with folks who you may not get along with outside or you can see like, this is not someone I would be friends with. <laughs> I would not get coffee with this person, but it's necessary to just show everybody respect um, all the time because that just makes it a lot easier to, to get work done. It makes it a lot just a better environment to work in. And it also goes back to that trust piece um, that is really important in this relationships. Self-awareness, um, so owning your actions, both good and bad, knowing maybe your contribution to a conflict or um, understanding where you fit into finding solutions, just owning up to things that maybe you didn't do as well as you should have, or 
you know, taking ownership of things that you do really well, all of that just really helps to, to keep the vibe and the good vibe in check um, at work. And then um, open communication. So figuring out, you know, how you send and receive information, what are the best ways for people to communicate with you? Um, and what are the best ways, what are the ways that you transmit communication, right? What are the ways that you talk to people, the ways that you um, you share things? And so knowing your preferences and asking colleagues their preferences helps the messages to not be crossed. It's really easy, especially, I'm not sure if a lot of you are on campus, this may not be the case, but some of you who are off, um, you've probably found in like hybrid roles or fully remote roles that like the communication piece is really important. Um, because it's so easy to read between the lines of an email or to not read between the lines of an email. And so if you have a good relationship with the person that you're communicating with and you are clear about what you need, clear about, you know, the ways that you understand things and clear about how they need those same things, um, then it just like makes the relationship a lot better and just makes it easier to do your job. Um, uh, probably you're catching the hint that like, these relationships, having positive ones or just positive working relationships just helps the work go better. It helps it run more smoothly. It helps you be able to focus on the work um, and to do the great job necessary to then cultivate these mentorship relationships that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so it's very cyclical. It may sound a little repetitive, but it's really because these are truly important pieces. So in approaching these relationships, um, you really want to know what they need from, what do you need from them, sorry. So what do you need from a supervisor? What do you need from a colleague so that you can do your best work? Um, think of the things that are really important to you and the, the ways that, maybe the ways that you learn, the ways that you process information, the ways that you prefer to be supervised, um, and so some of these, these are just four questions that you can think about, but there are probably others um, that meet your needs a little bit more. So like, do you prefer autonomy? Do you prefer like saying, someone saying, this is the job I need you to do. This is when I need it done. You go figure out how to get it done in that. Or if you need someone that is more on your back or someone that is more hands-on in order for that work to get done. And there's no right or wrong. It's just the way that you work. Um, you know, with the supervisor, do you need more check-ins, less check-ins? It's always good to have at least one at some point, but, um, but how often do you need to have these check-ins with your supervisor? Um, do you like written or spoken directives? Do you want somebody to, do you need someone to write it out for you so that it makes sense? Or can they, you know, just tell you something? Um, and then other kind of like environmental factors to consider, like working with email open or closed. Does, does this person, do you not like to just have that constant stream of like message, 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 or do you like to see it and reply right away? And so consider these, but also just think about all of the ways that you know you can do your best work. And if you don't know those yet, that's fine too, because you can start to think, oh, this is, this is how I want to work. This is how... I do my best work. Um, one exercise that I do a lot in advising is like, how do we get the best of you, right? So what are the things that you need to get the best of you in this space? Um, and so as you're thinking about what you need from them, consider those, and that can be, you know, part of maybe like your next supervisor check-in or check-in with colleagues. It's like, this is, this is how you get the best of me. And so the flip of that is figuring out what they need from you. And it's a lot of that same stuff. It's just their stuff. You know, is this just like all of the things that you're considering? Think that like the other people need to think about these and communicate those to you as well. Um, and sometimes it's not easy to, to intuit how somebody wants to, you know, supervise or their, the best way that they get their point across or the best way for them to work. So it's really important to just ask. Um, that's another just like part of that open communication piece saying, you know, what do you need from me? And what do you expect from me? You know, how, how am I doing so far? I like at this point in the semester, um, you can ask, you know, what are I, what am I, how am I right now? You know, ask for some kind of performance review and then start to get on the same page 
with these sorts of um, factors. So temperature check. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was, I just spoke for a long time and I'm going to take a sip of water as we think about, you know, is this making sense so far? And also what questions do you have? And so feel free to come off of mute or put in the chat, either the regular chat or privately to me, if you have any questions or have faced any of this um, in, your, in your positions thus far. Okay, I wish I could tell if someone was typing, if you are, raise your hand or something, just so I don't move on from here. Um, but if you're not, then I can keep going. And then we'll all stop at the end for more Q&A or just like some scenarios. All right. So handling difficult situations, um, very not everything is always positive. <laughs> and so it's good to think about, you know, if you haven't faced a difficult situation yet, that's, that's great. Um, but it's also good to know that they might happen and to think of ways or strategies to, so that they're not difficult for a very long time. Um, and so in talking to students and talking with supervisors, these are really common things that come up. So a lot on campus, especially um, your supervisor may be a first time supervisor um, and they don't really know how to manage people. They may not have a management style yet. And so they're kind of practicing their style on you and that's maybe a weird feeling. Um, or if you don't get along with your on-campus supervisor or colleagues, but you still need to be around them because you're a student here or you need to access the office in your role as a student, like how to manage, how to navigate those kind of like, I wanna say competing relationships, but those definite uh, parallels that could become an issue. Um, just a general clash of personalities and expectations, you know, they may, communicate one way, you communicate very opposite way, or they expect certain things that you either weren't expecting going into the job or weren't really communicated to you. Um, and then one we see it very, very often, which was kind of the, the crux of our first professional development session, which was about um, balancing school and work, is just the misunderstandings that some supervisors and managers have. Um, regarding your responsibilities as a student. So whether that's not allowing you to take time off or not understanding just like the ebbs and flows of, uh, of the campus, of the academic calendar um, and how maybe this time of year or maybe last week was not the best week for you and why that is. Um, so these are some really common situations that we see a lot um, that can cause conflicts that you know, make the work not pleasant or make just like the, the situation one that you don't want to be in. And so typically like conflicts like that or like any others that you may face, um, they occur like when the needs aren't being met. So thinking back to a few minutes ago, talking about what you need from them, and what they need from you, um, consider that as a starting point. So if you're finding yourself in situations where it's just like not clicking or your buddy has like start with some of those questions, um, use them. It's helpful to like name something together. So figure out like, oh, this is because of a lack of communication or this is because of unclear expectations or unclear directives because they, you know, told them to you, but you prefer things to be written out, like that kind of thing. Start to get, have these conversations that can be a challenge. Um, but if you approach it with this is, I see this as an issue, here are some solutions, um, or I see this as an issue, can we talk through this? It's just so that it eases the moment, it shows the person that you're working with, whether it's a colleague or a supervisor, um, that you're invested in making it work. Um, it's a very mature way to approach showing that you, you're aware enough to see it, maybe self-aware enough to see like what the issue is for you or maybe how you may have contributed, um, but start to like co-create solutions to these problems, um, to the conflict so that 
you just move forward in a way that will be mutually beneficial um, and in a way that is professional and it kind of allows you to build on that for the future. Um, if you think of these jobs, even if they're ones that maybe could connect to your future or maybe not, um, these skills are ones that you absolutely build upon so that maybe if the stakes are higher the next time you have a conflict, then you can pull from these experiences and start to kind of like have that confidence to, to speak up and advocate for yourself. Also, you can quit. <laughs> Um, because relationship management does not always work. Um, sometimes they're just irreconcilable. Sometimes it's just not feasible for whatever reason, or it does more harm than good. Um, and so I just, you know, feel like putting that out there is useful because very, very often in my office, in this line of work, we see people who are like, I've been in my internship for 10 weeks and it's been the worst 10 weeks of my life. And it's like, to leave. But that sometimes doesn't register as an option. Um, I honestly feel like your generation is very good at this, <laughs> but there's still like probably 50, 50 folks who are like, I'm out after, you know, a week or folks that are like stick around and suffer in silence. Um, and so know that like there are other options, um, talk to people about the issue here at Beyond Barnard, we talk through, um, scenarios all the time. We can help you prep for some of these difficult conversations, whether it's quitting or just like a general conflict. Um, we definitely are available for that. Um, if you're, you know, working off campus in some cases on campus, um, in some situations, HR could be a place to go. Um, but human resources just know that they work for the company, not for individuals. And so they may, it may be more advantageous for you, for them to encourage you to not work there anymore, um, if depending on the issue that you bring to them. And so it's really important to know your options, to know if you want to stick around. Um, and if you do, then start to go back to some of the previous slides, which yes, you have access to the slides and we will also, um, we'll also share the recording at a later date so you can see this too. But, um, but know your options, think about, you know, the ways that maybe trying to make it work, but know that like, if it doesn't, then it just doesn't. And there's nothing wrong with removing yourself from a situation that you, is not serving you. <laughs> work or otherwise. But hopefully things are positive <laughs> with some people that you're working with. Um, and so you'll want to sustain these relationships even beyond the work that you're doing. So if you're on a campus job, you know, sometimes those can last for a semester or can last for your full time um, at Barnard. Off-campus internships usually that like 10 to 12 week mark is when it starts to be, you know, are you staying or going, going cyclically with the, uh, with the semesters. And so if you know that there are folks, um, if you're doing the work, you enjoy the work, or if you just enjoy your coworkers, um, just do your job and do it well while you're there. It's really surprising how much people remember, you know, years later, if you did a good job. Um, I remember I worked at a campus office for a few years while I was an undergrad. And then like probably seven or eight years later, I applied for a job there. And there were like two or three people who were still there and remembered me from being a student who <laughs> I didn't think I did a great job, but they did. And so they hired me based on that. And so it's like people do remember, people do remember that you, who you are, what you bring to the table. And so just like show up and do the work. Um, also identify people that you want to stay in contact with. It may not be everybody. It may not be your direct supervisor. Um, but if there are folks who are doing cool stuff or just seem like interesting people or seem like people who have cool outside lives and maybe connected to worlds you want to be in, just think about, you know, who you'd like to be in touch with after this is over. Um, and then also make sure people are aware of your career goals, um, even if they are very different from what you're doing in the office. Because again, you never know who knows whom. And for the folks who are working on campus, there are very interesting people who will be very interesting outside of Barnard lives. Um, and so they connect to, there's so many different pockets of folks that you can be connected to if they trust that you um, are a person that they want to connect you to like their other circle with. Um, so do your job and do it well. <laughs> Make sure folks know what you're up to so that they know how they can help you. Um, and then after you leave, 
if it's appropriate to connect on LinkedIn, do that. Um, I know not all people or industries use LinkedIn as much. Um, Barnard Connect is another place for folks to connect if you're working with Barnard alums. Um, but definitely try to stay connected in some way. LinkedIn is one of the easier ones because you can just send out broadcast messages about yourself and it helps people to always know where you are, always know what you're up to. Um, but I'm sure there are other places that that can happen as well. Um, keeping in touch via email, try to have continued one-on-ones with people um, to cultivate that mentorship that is really necessary um, at this point. There's so many opportunities that can open up based on just who you know, um, based on who you know, who knows whom. <laughs> um, and so being able to just like have meetings and have people who like kind of a calling it like board of directors or like a network of support, just like a bunch of people who have your back, who know what you're about and feel confident um, helping you get to where you want to be professionally, knowing that you'll then do that for someone else. It's very much net mentorship, networking, very much a pay it forward kind of system. Um, and so, but it really requires you to keep in touch with people and make sure folks know, know what you're up to and know where, what you'd like to do next. And so that's really it, because <laughs> um, this is such like an individual topic that hopefully there is some conversation we can have um, in this, this next little bit. But the TLDR of it, um, workplace relationships are really built on these four pillars of trust, respect, self-awareness, and open communication. Um, there are other pieces that kind of fit into that, those pillars but these are the parts that are necessary to ensure that it's a positive environment for all of you. Um, it's really important to know what you need and to give others what they need with regard to these relationships. Um, if you don't know, it may be helpful to sit and really think, like have some reflective time to think about the thing, the best ways for folks to get the best of you. And then also maybe build that into a one-on-one -on -one with a supervisor um, or a colleague or something, just so that you can practice your responses and start to feel it out and then revisit it if that's actually turns out to be not the case. Um, always communicate through rough patches with colleagues and you know circle back to those pillars that these relationships are built on and also know that if it's not fixing or if it's not working that you can come to Beyond Barnard and we can help you out. And just remember, you know, you are a student first, but you won't be a student forever. <laughs> College goes very quickly. And so finding mentors and cultivating that network of support is going to be really helpful to translate, you know, what you're doing now into where you're going to go next. Um, and so that's it for professional development session number two. If you want to join us on November 17th, same time, <laughs> same Zoom, <laughs> um, to talk about transferable skills and really figure out, you know, figuring out where, what you're doing now, and what you're learning now, like how to fit that into the future. Um, and so with that, uh, if you guys, if anybody has any questions, I can stop my share so we can actually look at each other or look at the boxes and kind of uh, go from there. But thank you all again for coming. I really do appreciate it and hope that this was helpful. So if there are questions, share those now. <laughs> and you're welcome to the people who said thank you. So are there questions? All right, well, if not, uh, then have a good afternoon, have a good, hopefully you all have a good fall break, <laughs> whatever, whatever you're doing, if it's just going to take a nap, uh, you've all earned it. So thanks again.